Well, we've got another great guest today to share her inspirational story about her transformation with rheumatoid arthritis. Her name's Janet. She's from Iowa and she's put her two kids into another room so we can get this done. And my <laughs> wife, Melissa, is looking after my three. So we've got five kids on hold because this is a, a story that needs to be shared. We're going to talk today about her rheumatoid arthritis progress. Um, she also uh, experienced psoriasis. We're going to cover how she's been off medications for an entire year and has allowed that period of time to prove to herself before coming out and sharing her story that this actually is real and this actually has worked for her. Um, she, in the past, has been on prednisone, methotrexate, Plaquenil, um, and, um, and uh, we're going to cover all these things and how we can transform our life with the Patterson program and following a low-fat plant-based diet. So, Janet, thanks so much for coming on this episode. Uh, thanks for having me. It's such an honor to talk to everybody and, yeah, tell my story. Yeah, well, imagine if uh, you only have 30 seconds to talk about your transformation. Let's hear the, <laughs> let's hear the, the, the 30-second version before we get the big version. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, it started back in 2008. So I'm Few months after I had my first child, um, started off in my big toe, and when I went for checkups with um, the doctor, um, he kind of brushed it off at first, just you know, as something maybe I just bumped something or whatnot. But pretty soon it started spreading to my wrists, my elbows, and so I just looked up on the internet myself and researched it, and I already popped up. So um, I actually went to my GP and told her my suspicions, and um, she did the test, and it came back positive for RA. So we tried to get into a rheumatologist, but it was over a six-month wait to get in. Um, well, it turns out uh, one of my family members was building a house for somebody that worked in the department and got me in in a few weeks. <laughs> so I got in, and um, they started me on prednisone since I wanted to have kids and wanted to wait on the methotrexate for a while. It worked great. Um, the years went by, though, and you know, I was just exhausted and lots of brain fog and that's kind of when I started searching for other answers I just knew I couldn't go on like that it just you know get worse as I got older and I wanted to do more stuff with my kids and be there for them and mm. yeah okay um and then uh we'll, we'll delve into that a little bit more in a moment and how are you now so if people are thinking well I wonder if I should listen to this episode I mean how do your symptoms now obviously you're off medications uh how do you wake up in the morning yeah, um, I don't have any stiffness anymore. Um, you know, I'm still careful of my activities because I know if I do too much, you know, um, I can get Achilles tendonitis that'll flare up once in a while. Um, you know, I'm really trying to build some muscle and lift some weights. I'm doing mostly body weights right now. I want to get into weight lifting, but if I um, take any hand weights, my wrists will kind of flare up a little bit. So I'm still careful, but I know what foods to eat and everything to keep my inflammation at you know, next to nothing really. Okay. All right. Well, there's some great topics that we can also cover as well. We can talk about muscle building and we talk about how to avoid irritating the wrist when we're trying to um, put on muscle and, and, and become stronger. Um, and uh, um, everything that, we, that we've skipped in the little short intro. So um, <laughs> prednisone to kick off, uh, you know, that's my nemesis drug. Uh, virtually every single day I'm on my online forum working with new members who come in and say, hey, this is my situation. I'm on 10 milligram of prednisone, methotrexate, this, that, the other. And almost always the first course of action that I like to sort of suggest is let's get you off the prednisone let's, or uh, prednisolone, whatever it is, whichever steroid they're on, because um, it's just dished out like candy by doctors um, as a bridge to before starting another drug or just to appease patients who are a little bit uh, inflamed and they just want to leave the leave the, uh, the office feeling like they've got something in their hand and value for the 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, what was your experience on that and how did you get off prednisone? How long were you on it? What side effects did you have? Um, you know, it worked really well for me. It took away all my pain. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, I was just really exhausted was the big thing, but I attributed that to just being a first time mom. Yeah. So it's in my head, you know, there's no difference. And why would my doctor give me anything that would hurt me? Yeah. So I just, yeah, just took it not knowing. I really didn't know much about the disease at all. Um, 
yeah, I just kind of took the word of my doctor. I never really researched it much. I just, you know, counted on him for everything, which looking back, you know, I shouldn't have done it. It's not really my style not to look into stuff more, which happened later on, but yeah, it worked great. So I didn't question it. Um, I had it for almost two years um, because he knew that I wanted to have more children. So he didn't put me on anything else. Yeah. Um, and about a month, after I was pregnant, I was able to just stop it. And I didn't have any other symptoms throughout my pregnancy. Wonderful. Yeah, you were one of the the sort of lucky, I want to say maybe 50% of females who fall pregnant and then become asymptomatic, which is just a dream because you got yeah. enough on your, <laughs> I mean, being pregnant alone, you got enough on your plate. Um, and so that was obviously good. And then that enabled you to stop the prednisone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and so after um, I stopped breastfeeding my second, then we started the methotrexate. Oh, so you went the whole period between when you uh, uh, had your child and then fell pregnant again and then had another child before you really needed another uh, drug. So after my second child, then I started the methotrexate. So that's, but, but there was a couple of years where you weren't on any drugs at all. No, I was on the prednisone between kids. Oh, between kids, and then, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but since I he knew I wanted to get pregnant again, yeah. he didn't want to do the methotrexate. Yeah, so. I see. Um, this is going to be hard to answer, but do you have any <laughs> gut feeling about any negative impact of prednisone whilst breast breastfeeding? And did you do that? No, I was off of prednisone while I was breastfeeding. Um, right. I didn't feel any joint pain until after I stopped. And so then we made sure to start it up right away. And I took to that really well, too. I mean, I never had a problem responding really well um, pain-wise to the drugs. To methotrexate so, as well. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was my experience with methotrexate as well. Um, my, my, my rheumatologist said it will take 21 days to work. And uh, I don't know whether or not there was a little placebo effect in there, but literally on the yeah. 21st day, it started working for me. So, um, yeah, and, and, and it worked very effectively, but my symptoms were extreme. And because I'd guided my rheumatologist to say I didn't want to be on a lot of this very dangerous drug, which I had tried to avoid for the longest time, well over 12 months, I'd kept trying to avoid going on that. And I'd gotten very, very bad during that time. So, when I went on it and we started on 10 milligram a week, um, it was insufficient to, to completely suppress all my symptoms. I'd gotten rid of maybe 60, maybe 70% of the symptoms um, with, with 10 milligram. But that's where I stayed and we kept adding more drug, but we couldn't get rid of that last 20, 30% of my symptoms even when we got to, to maximum dose. Um, how high did you get with your dosage? Um, I was trying to remember. It's been a little while, but um, I was up to, I believe, seven of the tablets. And they're two and a half milligram, aren't they, in the States? Yes. So yeah. you were doing 15, 15 milligram per week. Seven, yeah. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a oh, whole I see. Lot. Yep, yep. A little bit more, yeah. I did maths in year one. Um, it's okay. <laughs> Right, so you're on the methotrexate. You'd had your two kids. You were cruising along. So why mm -hmm. did you? And you um, imagine you were you know, enjoying your foods and probably thinking like a lot of folks do when they've got this condition. At least I can enjoy my food, right? Because if I'm in pain, right. I'm like, yeah. And I did. I mean, um, in Iowa, in the Midwest, you know, meat is really big. Dairy oh. is really big. That's just the norm. Um, you know, we have winter here, so lots of casseroles. I mean, just everything. And I have a huge sweet tooth. I mean, I was just eating, eating anything I wanted. Um, I consider myself like semi-healthy. You know, I try to eat lean meats and not overindulge. But, you know, now looking back, I just, it was terrible. I ate so bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I even went to college for health and nutrition and management. You know, we never touched on any of this stuff. So wow. it's just Is that great. right? Is that right? I mean, that was a long time ago. That was in the early 2000s. But, you know, still. Still, Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, and eventually as the years went on, I just, my brain fog just it kept increasing. I mean, it just got so bad. I, would, I mean, still kind of touch and go once in a while, they'll kind of hit me, you know, but, um, 
yeah, I just got really tired, bad brain fog, and I just, you know, I had these kids I wanted to keep up with, I wanted to play with, mm. and I just, you know, a lot of times I couldn't do that, you know, it'd be like seven, eight o'clock at night, and I'd just be dragging, and just, I wanted a, more energy, um, and one of my friends had told me about this protein drink that she, she was taking, and she just had, you know, gobs of energy, and was working out like crazy, and it was just um, amazing, you know, and me, I'll try anything, you know, if it works, so I tried it. <clears throat> and you know three four weeks later you know my joints started flaring up a little bit more and um i started to get this rash on my face that turned out to be psoriasis and just it kept getting worse and worse and worse and um so finally i was just kind of going online dabbling a little bit and that's when i went into like dairy and the gluten so i tried cutting that out and stopping this protein shake and you know you shouldn't have this much protein it's really bad for us in particular um i went to my doctor and he wanted to increase the methotrexate and i was just like no that's not what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to cut back on it i don't want to do any more so my side effects are so terrible and i asked him about the dairy and everything and he didn't really have much to say about that so I'm kind of left disappointed and I um, found a functional medicine doctor that was two hours south of us in Des Moines and kind of talked to her a little bit, um, you know, paid way too much money for a ton of supplements, a ton of labs, yeah. stuff like that. And she gave me this diet plan when we were all done. You know, I thought we were kind of on the same page. Well, the diet plan had some dairy in it and some meats and stuff and I don't know. I was really, you know, cried. Just, I thought maybe this would be my answer. Oh, I spent yes. all this money and mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, I tried her supplements for a while just to try it. Yep. And it didn't get better. It just kept getting worse. Um, you know, pretty soon I would see a little more inflammation in my fingers and I just, I didn't understand it. And so that's when I just um, researched more online and that's when I found you and under my search and read a little bit about it. Um, and on Mother's Day in 2017, that was my gift to myself, was your program. <laughs> so for Mother's Day and the day after, I fasted and, you know, did the green juice. And my <laughs> husband was going crazy because he's like, well, I can't make you breakfast in bed. I can't do any of yeah. this because you're not eating anything <laughs> except for your green juices and spinach. So he would bring me that stuff and make me my green juices. Oh, and, funny. Yeah, but I just... You know, I wanted to remember the exact date that I started. Yeah. I just wanted to prove to myself that, you know, I could do this. Something could work, um, you know, and while doing that during the program, it's kind of stressful. Mm. And I kind of just forgot to take my mother truck safe for a few days. Right. You know, I was gradually getting worse anyway. I didn't feel like it was working. So I decided to just not take it anymore anyway. Right. Well, three months later, I realized how bad of a decision that was. Because then I really slowed up. You know, medication left my body. You know, I couldn't bend one of my fingers. One of my knees started getting inflamed. And I just, that was a big mistake. Yeah, and a, <laughs> and a common one. Um, I don't know yes. whether or not it was a conscious decision for you to, to get off it or it was almost like in a case of rebellion or something. But, you know, it's, it's, it's common and something that I have to sort of correct from time to time when I'm working with someone uh, who, who, who tell me that. Um, I said, look, I don't think it's wise to... First of all, you shouldn't be coming off drugs without consulting the doctor. I mean, that's a that's first of all. Second of all, even if the doctor said you can do what you want, let's say the doctor was pretty laid back, um, <laughs> I would say, well, I would I would keep everything consistent. Start the program with everything else completely consistent, right down to the amount of supplementation that you're taking, the daily curcumin. Even if you're taking a little curcumin uh, pain relief thing, keep everything exactly the same so that. Um, you can compare how your body feels to how it was before, where the, where the only change is um, what you're eating, how you're exercising and so on. Um, so you've, you've taken away your big insurance, which was the pain relief from the methotrexate, <clears throat> and that has revealed the situation or the reality uh, underneath, um, even though you're on the healthy foods. So what did you do then? Um, so I had to check up with the rheumatologist. And he suggested that we go on Plaquenil because in the meantime, too, I'd also stopped um, birth control, which I'd been on for years because I just wanted everything just out of my system. I was so 
just sick of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I did that. So um, I also told him about what I was doing. And, I mean, he was nice compared to other people that I've heard talk to about it. But he just looked at me and said, you know, I can never do what you're doing, so I'm not going to tell my patients to do that either. So, and that was it. I mean, he's kind of done talking about it, so it was just, mm. that was it. But um, I started the black window just on my own, and then I gradually reduced it myself what, because he... Why, why not resume methotrexate? Just curious. Um, he, since I stopped the birth control, yeah. he was thinking just in case he got pregnant, he didn't want me in the methotrexate. So that's what he oh, did. Oh, right. Still open for more babies. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Unstoppable. Yeah. So I was pretty gradual in my reduction of that. And then, um, in February of 2018, um, that's when I stopped taking it on my oldest daughter's birthday. So I remember that date again. So it's been, you know, a little over a year since I've had any of the pills, but, um, yeah, as you know, the hardest part of your program for me, it was just being patient with the foods that I introduced because I was so hungry at the beginning, you know, all you're doing is your quinoa and your rice and, and I was losing a lot of weight. I lost a ton of muscle, you know, I just, I mean, I was feeling good, but pretty weak. So, um, yeah, I just, was ready to add some more foods and sometimes I'd add them too fast and then I'd realize, well, I can't have that food, you know? So now I have it down really well and I know what I can and can't have. And there's still a lot of stuff I can't have, mm. but there's a lot of stuff I can. I mean, I can easily keep weight on now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, tell us about your reintroduction successes. What did you find was able to be introduced uh, fairly easy for you? And I'm curious, especially around fruits. Yeah, fruits are the tough one for me. Um, you know, at first, I know I introduced it probably too early, but oats was a really good thing for me, and it helped me put on some weight, too. Yeah. So that was pretty big. Um, really, my staples are the quinoa, um, wild blueberries. I mm -hmm. love that added to anything. I put that in there. Um, Did the you spinach. say wild wild blueberries? Blueberries, yeah. They're yeah. frozen. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah just sure. So yeah. So. Yeah, um, yeah, those are my staples when I have some inflammation. That's kind of the go-to. But um, I can't do bananas. Mm -hmm. Cantaloupe is the worst for me. Is that I can't right? do cantaloupe or papaya. Is that yeah, right? I tried those when you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. recommended them, so I tried them. Yeah. And yeah. No, definitely no good. Yeah. Um, any dried fruits I can't do, or dates, mm -hmm. you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. Raisins. But otherwise, apples are really good. Oranges. Um, yeah, I really like citrus quite a bit. I found that helps in my digestion, mm -hmm. which has always been kind of an issue. So I try to either drink some lemon or lime water or eat an orange before every meal. Yeah. That's really been a big help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are the big ones. But usually, typically any vegetable is fine with me. Um, yeah. Grains don't seem to bother me either, but it's more mm -hmm. just sugars. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Um, to not have the, you know, because right now I'm in the process of just finalizing some parts of my book, uh, planning on uh, publishing it finally on Amazon. So it's available more, more you know, accessibly to more people. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm attempting to put down a suggested exact sequence of foods. And every time I speak to someone else, I can completely, you know, revisit it again and think, oh, no. Because there's no two people have the same sequence of foods, and that's what makes it yeah. so challenging. You know, I, I, <clears throat> I want people to eat more fruit. Fruit is just such a, uh, uh, an easy to assimilate and completely non. Um, uh, like there's no downside from just eating lots and lots of fruit. It's just so easy to uh, to digest and to use the energy and so rich in nutrients and so forth. Um, and I, I've just been reading more and more about the benefits of fruit eating, and I'd yeah. really like people to eat more fruit. So, you know, it's, it's frustrating, not just from your point of view that you can't eat these delicious fruits, but also when we're trying to, um, you know, have a plan that can, can suit everyone. And it just, it's not like that. We all have these different food sensitivities 
And so we have to wait a long, long time uh, for mm -hmm. some things like bananas, for example, it might take a couple more years and you might never feel comfortable with eating bananas. I still feel a funny like reservation when they go in my smoothie that smoothies and things. And so, um, you know, just like you get the, almost like a bad relationship you've had in the past. You don't want to bump into that person again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I keep trying to, I mean, bananas are the one thing I really want to get to, but yeah. I'm not really scared to try them anymore because I know that if I back off of them with what I know I can eat, I'll be fine. Yeah. So I just, as long as I have that, I know I'll be okay. But yeah. um, even this past winter, um, I found out I couldn't have any beans, but mm. beans cause me to flare up too. And I just found out because I started making chili more. Yeah. And um, yeah. So, I mean, I still find, you know, unusual things. Yeah. I just, yeah, it's a big relief just knowing what my safe foods are and that I found them for sure. That's a big help. Um, other starchy foods like potatoes, uh, are you able to eat those? Sweet potatoes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love potatoes. Those are okay. huge. That's another thing that helps me keep the weight on too. And I mean, yeah. even like the snacks, you know, I'll slice up potatoes and microwave them for yeah. five minutes and I have my own potato chips and stuff like that. Yeah. Because I go on the road quite a bit, so it's just... You know, and stuff like apples and oranges, I'm glad I can eat those because those are so easy to take along with you. Great, great. So you can eat those fruits in between meals. You've got your blueberries, you've got apples, oranges. You can snack on those in between your meals. Um, yep. And so you sort of curb the hunger and get that really kind of nutrient-rich, water-rich foods into you in between the meals. And then you've got your nice starchy McDougal style diet in between your <laughs> right where you've got lots and lots of complex carbohydrates, which are perfect yes. uh, fuel for the body. Um, and uh, you throw in your leafy greens all the time uh, to make sure you're not oh, yeah. missing out on any minerals and you're getting your essential fatty acids that way with lots and lots of those greens. And so happy days. Let's talk about um, exercise. Uh, well, let, I'll let you choose. Um, do you want to talk about, give some tips as to what you found really helped you getting through the program, whether it be family, whether it be mindset, give us some tips and then we'll talk about exercise. Um, as far as tips, I think one of the big thing is to find, you really need to find what stresses you. I think one of the big triggers from stress. And so I, you know, I realized, you know, a year ago that my job was really stressing me out. So I started to just to find things that would spark joy in life, like um, photography. I kind of got back into, and um, this year I'm starting my own business with that. But I'm just trying to find things that are more relaxing. You know, I kind of realized when we go camping over the summer every weekend, all of a sudden, like my inflammation would go down, or when we went on a long vacation, and it just like hit me. I'm not stressed out, and whenever I get anxious or stressed. You know, if I can find things that will take that away and alleviate it, um, that helps, you know, almost as much as finding what foods, you know, mm -hmm. are reactive. So um, that's my biggest thing is just find what your stress triggers are and take those away. Um, you know, about six months ago, I found um, lemon balm tea. I don't know if you've ever had that, but that's been a big help for my anxiety. It's just an herb, but um, that's been pretty big. Um, yeah. But that's you know, and I love this because although it's not quantitative and it's easy to measure, and I can't pull out the scientific reference, um, uh, there was an uh, a podcast interview that um, uh, God, I just talked about this the other day as well. Um, what's his name? Um, Hyman, uh, Doctor Mark Hyman, did with a rheumatologist, and I I, I should share this. I, I will share this with my mailing list. Um, he interviewed a, um, a rheumatologist, and in the interview between Dr. Hyman and the rheumatologist, and this, he's got a podcast called um, Doctor's Pharmacy, and pharmacy with an F, so that's Mark uh, Hyman. Uh, and it's really, really fascinating because he talks about not only are we finding now that with rheumatoid arthritis, um, what, we've, what we've known for a long time, which is that stress negatively impacts the condition, but joy positively impacts the condition. And so we're actually seeing relief of symptoms by people doing things that they love and expressing gratitude and having uh, more um, uplifting emotions go through their body. And so, I mean, this is fascinating to me because yeah. think about if we can just, um, how, how wonderful it is if we can actively seek joy in our life and better communication and relationships with our family and friends 
and look to justify and 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 rightly so doing things that we love i mean then mm-hmm. you've got this passage to to a rite of passage to have a great enjoyable life which in turn helps your symptoms which then makes you feel more happy and excited and again you've got that positive cycle so i think this is a really exciting thing because any excuse that we have uh, particularly when it's now becoming more clear that that it's that it's factual uh, to go and do things that we love and to to be happy and to seek happiness is is yeah wonderful. I think that's huge mm. especially nowadays I mean you know everybody's always on their phones and just I know we lose a lot of interaction and just a lot of activity so yeah I think it's huge um, that kind of reminded me you know I've always been a really good visualizer even in school I would daydream really easily. So, I mean, this whole time, I just visualize myself, you know, maybe running someday. I know it's a big goal, but I really think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And just visualizing all these good things happening, you know, because, um, I mean, just what we're doing is stressful, you know, trying to get over these humps day after day. Um, you know, a lot of people just feel so alone if they don't have a good support system, which I definitely have. I mean, my husband's amazing. He's one of my kids. So I'm very thankful for that. But, um, yeah, just visualizing what you're going to do because it's such a slow healing process. And I remember what you said it was, like 1% a month or something. But it's just a really slow healing process. And it's hard to remember that some days when you're going through a lot of pain. But all of a sudden when you break through that wall and when you peel off more layers, it's just, it's just such an amazing feeling. Yes. Tell us about how you do your, your visualization because um, I've got a – there's a comedian friend of mine who I've known for a long time, and he and I have talked about this a lot and shared ideas around this. Uh, and he's extremely successful here in Australia, very like household name. And um, he's been using these techniques for a very, very long time. Uh, and so did I a lot more in the past when I was in my university days. And, uh, you know, I, I achieved a lot, I believe, through, you know, um, visualization techniques and affirmations and stuff through my university uh, four or five years there where and I got some great results that I'd pictured and dreamed of and really almost felt like I'd manifested, yeah? Um, mm-hmm. Since the kids have come along, uh, it's been hard to kind of <laughs> find that kind of routine around this. So tell us what you've done because I'm so, so convinced that this is so powerful. How do you set aside the time and what do you do to create these visualizations? Uh. I don't really have a method. I mean, like I said, it's always just really easy for me. I just kind of do it. I mean, sometimes even when I'm in the car, which probably isn't always the best thing, but I'm always just thinking about it. And even sometimes just listening to music can help. You know, a certain song can just get you going. And I think music's really important too. But um, I don't know. It's, you know, with kids too, it's super hard to find a quiet time Mm. but um sometimes you know right after you get ready for bed you're just laying there for a while that's usually the best time for me you know and it doesn't have to take a long time you know like even five minutes is really good that's exactly when i used to do it as well (laughs) lie down and i used to just prop myself up with a pillow behind me and sit against the wall uh with my uh notes in front of me and just picture try and picture all the things that i wanted to happen um really interesting Mm. that you said right right before bed again that and i also find that it puts you in a nice, uh, a nice positive state of mind to lie down. It's a way of distracting you from your day's activities and it goes into this neutral zone where it's like, hey, this would be nice in the future and it sort of distracts you and puts you in a nice state ready for sleep, I think. Yeah, well, it's one of the few quiet times that you really have too. You know, your phone is away, just your computer's off. You know, there's no nothing going on around you. You're just getting ready for bed. You're ready to go to sleep. It's mm. just a good time to reflect on your day and everything. Mm. Yeah, right. I think that visualization really helps. I mean, it gets me excited for the future and, you know, especially with all my progress too. It's just very exciting. Hey, yeah, fantastic. I'm going to give you some crazy examples of some things that I <laughs> visualized and came true in a period of about three or four years that I never, ever thought would. First of all, um, you know, when I was at, at, at university and in my first year, I wrote down that I would get the university medal Okay, like obviously that's just absurd thing to put down in your first year, and I was not get not doing well in my first year because I was getting, um, you know, in terms of like A, B, and C, I was getting C's and some B's because I was partying like crazy. Okay, so I was a big socialite and I had lots of wonderful new friends, and we were just 
playing pool and ping pong late at night and drinking. And, um, but in my second year and then third year, I applied myself more and more and more. And although there is actually no university medal at the university, which I came to understand later, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did get the highest thesis grade that had ever been issued in the Department of Maths, Physics, Computing, Electronics ever. And they gave me the Macquarie University, which is my, um, my university science prize. So um, I also won some other awards and it felt like I'd achieved that goal. And I, I am happy to admit I was, I'm not the smartest person, but I work like crazy at trying to solve problems and work things out. Uh, and so at university, uh, you know, we got our assignments and I would just spend longer than other people trying to work. And I had friends who were way smarter who'd finished their assignments and I'd have to ask them for help every single time. But just by having the dream, having the goal and that objective and working harder than everybody else, I was able mm-hmm. to, to, to hit that. Another crazy one is that I, I wanted to have a, a brand new sports car. And, uh, and, <laughs> and sure enough, within, a, within about 12 months of leaving university, um, we were given these stock options in our startup company because our company got bought out by another company. And although those stock options went to zero and I didn't earn any of that money, um, we actually, um, I was actually able to click on a, on a literally click the mouse one day and, uh, and cash in just enough stock options to go and buy a sports car. And that was crazy. And that, when you're 25 or something, I mean, that blows your mind. Uh, and as I said, then all the rest of the stock options went to zero. But that sports car came out of what I think to be this, this miraculous ability of being able to manifest our, our future. I should have set my goals higher. That's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> I should well, have been. Good, I mean, just visualizing it, I think you almost fine tune your everyday activities to work towards that goal. You may not realize it. Yeah. But you're just fine tuning everything to work towards it. So, like I said, I mean, my biggest thing that I visualize is me running. You know, that's such yeah. a big part of my life. And so I, I know it's going to happen someday. And I'm not in a rush to get there. I mean, I am, mm-hmm. but I'm not at the same time. I just want to mm-hmm. be realistic about it. But that's mostly what I visualize. Have you read the book? Running after my Have you read Born to Run? Mm-mm. Okay, so you, as soon as we get off this call, write, uh, we'll write it down now and go and buy that book. So when I was learning more about the power of visualization and, and manifesting and stuff, um, and this is way before that real cheesy film came out called The Secret, which is basically a commercialization of, 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 a, of a fundamental um, power that we have as human beings, and I just think that that just basically just cheesifies the whole thing. But way before that, uh, the readings that I was doing was talking about uh, little knickknacks and things that you can convince your subconscious mind that this is actually happening. Okay, so in your case, if you want to run, go and buy books on running. Get yourself literally a pair of sports shoes over the next couple of days that you are going to run in. Um, start looking at uh, running magazines when you go into the, the the news agency. Talk about running with friends. Say, where do you go on your runs? Just basically indulge the senses with discussions and thoughts and things around running so do all those things i'm telling you you'll be running before before long and in that book born to run one of the the guys who's a sports physiologist or something he talks about if you can walk you can run there isn't very much um physical difference between the two and so whilst pain may come with running and pain doesn't with walking the actual mechanics are so similar that we're within almost just a leap of faith away from running at any time, as long as we can walk and we can put up with any pain that comes from the running. And they also talk about how to run without injuries, how to run safely and stuff like that. And it's a fascinating adventure book. It's just a fascinating book. Christopher McDougal, Born to Run. Everyone should read that book. It's one of my, one of my top 10. I'm definitely going to look for that. Sir, <laughs> yeah. some of those things. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I really enjoyed talking about the visualization. Let's talk about, um, let's talk, let's spend just a couple of minutes talking about exercise. Um, so uh, you ha- have you engaged in a lot of exercise in the last 12 months or is it just something that now is going to come into the picture? Um, I have always done it. I mean, I'm such an outdoors person, but winters here are kind of brutal. Mm. So 
in the winter time, I usually kind of slow down a little bit. I mean, I have an exercise bike, I have an elliptical, but I just need that outdoor distraction. I just mm. love being outside. Mm. So um, this winter I focused on doing more. And what I do is I just go on YouTube and I look at different exercise videos. And that's how I do my Bikram yoga too, because we don't have Bikram yoga in the area um, yet. But I just do it on YouTube. And even though it's not you know really hot, I still get tons of benefits from it just doing it at home in my living room wow. whenever I want. And so I do a lot of uh, low impact, high intensity videos too. Mm. And I'm able to do some jumps. Um, I kind of graduated myself from doing push-ups on my countertop to doing them on the floor. I have kind of these handles, though, that help my wrist. Sure. And so my wrists don't get sore while I'm doing push-ups on my knees, not on my feet yet. Yep. But I'm still, you know, kind of graduating myself to doing more and more uh, with my body weight. So it's really helped me build some muscle. So kind of excited to keep continuing that. There's nothing wrong whatsoever with using those grips to you do your push-ups. Um, yeah. I just like yourself watching YouTube videos online. If anyone's if if anyone's interested in some, in a really really good comprehensive YouTube channel that covers all aspects of weight training, so not necessarily the stuff we've just been talking about, but uh, there's a guy called uh, uh, Jeff Cavalier, and he's Athlean X A T H L E A N X, uh, and that's a YouTube channel that I watch all the time. He gives so much information about how to you know, basically uh, uh, build muscle mass um, and avoid injury. And he talks about, you know, he basically says, look, everyone has problems. No, no one's body is perfect the way that we all imagine that everyone else's body is perfect. Maybe you've got a Chris Hemsworth or someone who, who, who doesn't have necessarily the aches and pains of us with rheumatoid arthritis injuries and joint pain. But you can work around everything and achieve a resistance workout. And that's what's really, really great. So if you need to hold handles on little um, tools to be able to do the push-ups, then that's mm -hmm. what's necessary for you. And that's what's awesome and help you progress. You'll build forearm and wrist strength by doing that anyway, which may or may not, regardless in the future, enable you to do push-ups the way that other people do. But who cares how you do your push-ups? What matters yeah, is exactly. that, yeah, it's irrelevant. Um, okay. And then with regards to, um, building more strength, I've always found that when we're, when we're trying to just basically add some more pounds or kilograms of muscle to our body, always start or, or, or at least always include the legs because your know, glute muscles and, and leg muscles are yeah. our biggest muscles. And I got to say, it's so easy to build the legs. I was just at the gym a couple of days ago and I haven't done walking lunges for a while because I re-injured my knee nearly 12 months ago now and I've been talking about it a lot inside uh, the support group and uh, exchanging ideas with others about knee rehabilitation. Anyway, because um, my knee is like very, very damaged from when I had very, very long-term inflamed uh, synovitis. Anyway, um, so just the other day, I've started doing these lunges again. Boom, my glutes are just on fire the last few days, right? Yeah. Yeah, I go through that a lot. And yeah, I've even started doing some jump squats and lots of different like, exercises. But that's my big focus is my yeah. lower body. Um, I do some upper too, whatever I can. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, my back, my abs, you know, anything that can really support everything is great. And yeah, I think that's providing me a lot of relief too. And it's, you know, again, a stress relief. You are just getting all that out. So, yeah, yeah the soreness feels good because I don't have sore joints. It's just sore muscles. And that's a really good feeling. I know. It's a really <laughs> good feeling. You, it's funny when we, we actually enjoy that pain, don't we? Yeah, it's the best. It really is. I mean, it's been years since I've experienced muscle soreness without the joint soreness. And it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I must say, I, I, I like it a lot as well. Um, one little caution if anyone does have sore knees and they're doing this and they're happy with their pain. While the muscles are rebuilding, I notice, for instance, I've noticed with my glutes last few days that whilst they've been, in fact, today, I, I did the walking lunges again yesterday because they just gotten down enough where it wasn't going to hurt me to do them again. Um, but when they were, my glutes were really sore, I noticed that there was more tightness and more stiffness around my knee. Basically, I felt like the glutes went tight while they're rebuilding. And that can feel like potentially like it's worked counterproductively, but we need to be aware that whilst things are healing and they're tender, um, 
you know, that our body may behave a little bit uh, less ideally as what it would otherwise. And then I had to remember this was the case when I was in my 20s and had no health problems at all, to my knowledge, um, you know, other than my digestive issues, which I thought were nothing. Um, and, and at that time, you know, you'd work out at the gym, you'd be sore and I'd have a sore, I'd work out so hard. My chest was so sore. I'd walk around like a, like the tin man. Do you know what I mean? Um, (laughs) and so we all know that, look, if you've had a strong workout and your muscles are sore, that's going to affect you for a few days and not to misinterpret that as, oh, oh, big disaster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to give yourself a lot of flexibility, but, um, you know, with the squats or anything that you're doing, the lunges, it's important to remember too to really stretch or do your yoga or anything like that. Cause that they go hand in hand. Otherwise, yeah, I'd be sort of in my joints too, probably if I didn't do both of them. Yeah. But it's really important to throw that in too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I stretch like a lot after doing everything. <laughs> in fact, you know, the Bikram sequence that you talked about online, um, I've done so many classes. I, I, I know the whole sequence pretty well. Um, and what I do is, um, after I go and do my little workout at the gym, uh, I then walk over to a quiet area of the, of the, of the gym. And, and I do a bunch of the standing series postures that I know, uh, help me the most to relieve the muscles that always get tight. Um, and so I spend 15 minutes doing that every single day so i don't miss a day where i don't stretch and today in fact this afternoon i'm just actually just going to bikram so uh you know yeah keeping it keeping it real all right yeah. we're, we're, thank you so much for uh for coming on this episode um i want to uh congratulate you for all that you've achieved with your health and you've put in a tremendous amount of effort and the rewards are magnificent so well done keep it up and uh, good luck with your um, muscle building. I mean, this is a much fun, more enjoyable stage than obviously where you were uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, too. I just have so much gratitude to you and your family just for putting in the time and effort for everything. Because if I hadn't have found you, I'm, just, I'm not sure where I'd be at this point. But, yeah, it's just phenomenal. I mean, again, that's why I waited so long to tell anybody because I just wanted to make sure that it worked. So, you know, after being off my meds, you know, taking nothing for over a year, it definitely works. So it just takes a lot of time and patience more than you want to sometimes, but yeah, it'll work. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. We all wish we could hit fast forward on the whole process. That's for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks so much, Janet. Thank you.